interrupt this program to bring you Courage, the Cowardly Dog Month! Whole month of Courage, the Cowardly Dog! First appearing in 1996, it was picked up by Cartoon Network, who work in the middle of Burbank, and directed by cartoonist John Gilworth. Though many years have passed since the original air date, it's now time for Zack Morris to celebrate this great show! Well, old sport, what do you think? Hey guys, Zach Marsh here, and welcome back to Courage Month. So the, the today's reviews we're going to be reviewing are Evil Weevil and McPherson Phantom, so let's get into both of those. Okay, so this first episode, so this first half of the episode, Evil Weevil is actually very, is actually very interesting in that, uh, there is, there's, there's just a bug butler, which is interesting, but then he winds up having sinister intent, which isn't as cool, but, uh, in any case, it starts off with, with Eustace, Muriel, and Courage returning home in Eustace's truck with groceries. Um, well, they accidentally hit something. Um, and, Mur and Muriel is concerned about is concerned about what they hit, so he, so she asks Eustace to pull over so that she can come out get out and investigate. And they do get out to discover a bug dressed in a butler's uniform, which uh, which which they then proceed to ask if if he's all right and. He does point out that there are several different things wrong with him, but uh, other than that, he's all right. So, so uh, it, it, it feeling kind of guilty for the fact that they ran him over. They decided to take him home and nur and kind of nurse him back to health. Um, and actually, and also, and with uses kind of complaining about how it's just time for dinner and that they need to actually get home soon. Um, so, so Muriel volunteers to take him home to to feed him dinner, um, which the which the bug is happy about. Um, at which point, the at which point, once they're actually sitting down to eat dinner, the bug actually introduces himself as a Jeeves Weevil, or just the Jeeves Weevil for short. But uh, in any case, Jeeves, if, if you want, uh, for short, um, he and he explain he explains how he's a, how he his particular species of weevil is a, is ba is basically raised to be butlers. They they live to be subservient and live to serve other people. Um, ca case in point, when um he's when when Muriel brings out watermelon and pie, he decides to not only have her sit down have her sit down and pull out a chair for her, but he also serves uses in Muriel Pie personally. Um even stay even stating to Eustace that the, that a hardworking man such as himself deserves the biggest piece of pie. And while well, Eustace is going to complain, he eventually realize he eventually realizes what um Jeeves Weevil actually said to him. So and and kind of pays him pays him kind kindly in this for the compliment and tries to Point out that he's got a good head on his shoulders, but then points out that he doesn't actually know what the equivalent of a bug having shoulders is. So he just so he just kind of so he just kind of spitballs a little bit try, because he, since he doesn't know the actual terminology, which is really funny. Um, at which point, at which point, um, Muriel asks Jeeves if he would like some watermelon, and he says that he would be delighted to, and then proceeds to drink the entire watermelon by himself and slurps it up with his pro proboscis, which, uh, which everybody just stare at it, staring at him slack jawed in awe, and he just points out that he must have been a lot hungrier than he thought. Um, at which point he serves Courage some pie and then gets up to leave. Um, and Cur with Cur and the Courage is by this point a little bit nervous because obviously he drained an entire wall watermelon in like six seconds, so... So Courage is a little wor is kind of a little wary of him, both because he's a, an, a weird insect thing, and also because he just ate a, an entire watermelon by himself. Um, but in any case, later that later that day, um, Muriel is actually Eustace is actually relaxing in his chair, and Jeeves decides to give Eustace a, a back ma a back massage since uh, he know he notes that he deserves it because he's been working very hard and he's very tense. Um, and Gur and Courage is there watching the whole display from the stairs. Um, and, and it's at this point where the where Jeeves actually reveals his sinister intent, which is that he then proceeds to suck Eustace's blood nutrients and causes him to become skinnier. Um, which you, with Eustace merely remarking that merely remarking that he feels good and he actually feels a lot sleep, but actually feels a lot sleep, sleepier and decides that he actually needs a nap. So he gets up and all of his clothes except for his underwear fell off because. Eustace catches his underwear, but everything else falls off. At which point, Eustace gets up and gets ready to go to bed. At which point, Jeeves t Jeeves picks up Eustace's clo Eustace's clothes and follows him upstairs. Um, Courage is a little bit nervous, but Eus but but um but Jeeves reassures Courage, pointing out that he's actually been trained that, that he will actually take in um take in Eustace's trousers and cl other clothes, pointing out that he's. That he actually trained, they actually trained at a university to do that. So he gets up. So he, and with that, he then proceeds to go upstairs. With Courage just becoming even more nervous since he just literally saw 
Je uh, Jeeves drain use this of his nutrients. Um, at which point, at which point it's, la it's later that night, Kurt uses his sense, curled up and gone to bed like he said he would, and Jeeves is actually taking the opportunity to actually draw a bath for Muriel. Um, and tells her and tells her that he actually put in bat beads from Spain and a couple of other and a couple of other fancy things and Muriel merely remarks that's like a spa and goes to take a bath but uh but uh, but and then she proceeds to go into the bathroom and close the door um at which point at which point courage actually hears a scratching a strange scratching noise um and he pokes his head out to see Jeeves trying to get into the bathroom to get to Muriel but uh he can't because he doesn't know how to open the door so um, because, so because, so because of that, um, he, Courage no, notes that he's actually trying to drain, drain Muriel's nutrients as well. Um, at which point they lock eyes and Jeeves decides to give up. Um, so, so Courage then proceeds to go, go back to bed and actually, and when curl up with Muriel, who is now, now very sleepy. But, uh, he also hear once again, hears the strange scratching noise. Um, and upon looking around for the source, he eventually discovers that Jeeves has somehow made it into the master bedroom and is now clinging to the ceiling. And... And Courage immediately panics and tries to wake up Muriel to let her know that Jeeves is on the ceiling, but she's too sleepy from her bath to actually move and wake up, so he, reali so he realizes that it's going to be completely pointless to try and warn her, so he just curls up under the club covers and hopes for the best. At which point Jeeves, Jeeves turns his head 180 degrees like an owl and sticks his proboscis down again. Later that mor that next morning, um, Jeeves is actually making breakfast for Muriel, Courage, and the rest of the and um, uses, at which point... Eustace actually comes down into the bit, comes down into the kitchen, um, and he's a lot, and he's even more skinnier than he was the, than he was the night before. Um, so he dra so it's impl and it's heavily implied that Jeeves actually was the, actually drained him of his nutrients again. Um, and Muriel even notes that Eustace lo is looking a bit sickly and doesn't look very good, and suggests they go outside and get some fresh air. So Eustace decided, at her suggestion, decides to go and do exactly that. Um, but Courage is a little concerned. About what's actually going about what's actually going on, so he goes to actually so he goes outside to actually go and investigate, go and investigate, and, ho and hope Eustace is all right. And what he discovers is that Eustace is actually flapping in the in the wind. Um, and and when Courage goes up and tries to tug on his on his trousers and let him know what's going, and tries to get he tries to get him to respond and try and see and see if he and he, if he notices, um, Eustace just completely collapses into dust and nearly blows away in the wind until so Courage scoops him up and puts him in a plastic baggie with the glasses and all. Um, at which point you at which point Courage runs runs inside to let Muriel know what happened to Eustace, but. Uh, by this point, Jeeves has actually managed to start draining Muriel as well, and Courage, understandably, panics and, and decides to call to call an exterminator to let him know that they have a bug. Um, at which point, at which point, um, G, at which point, um, the exterminator arrives and Courage uses uses his signature morphing to morphing to the thing that's the current threat of the episode thing to try and warn the the um, exterminator about Jeeves, but uh, the exterminator just sprays Courage and leaves because he looks like a bug. So he does. So he decides. Eh, this is probably it, and sprays him in the face, and then leaves. So at which point, at which point, um, Jeeves and Muriel have actually gone into the other room, much to Courage's pet, much to Courage's fear and chagrin. So he run, so he run, and he runs in to discover that um, that Jeeves is currently shooting, shooting Muriel like it's a photo shoot. So after, and after being disoriented by the camera for a bit, um, Cur Courage eventually knocks the camera out of it, out of Jeeves's hands or or feelers or whatever the hell he has. Um, and, tell, and tells the and tells the oversized weevil to hit the road. Um, which 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 Muriel merely points out isn't very isn't very um civilized of courage. Um, and Jeeves and Jeeves decide uh, kind of weighs in with that as well, pointing out that if courage actually has a problem with them, that they that they should settle it like gentlemen. So they decide to have a bit of a contest. Where long story short, they try to eat the most disgusting thing they can. Um, and they and the kind of, and whoever eat, refuses to eat the food has to leave has to has to leave and Jeeves and Jeeves gets to stay. Um, so they start off with so they kind of start off with just escalating versions of broccoli. They start off with boiled broccoli, which isn't all that disgusting. Courage manages to eat it just fine, but then they get to rancid broccoli, with, rancid boiled broccoli, which Courage struggles with, but manages to plug his nose so he can actually eat it, and then. Finally, they take they take Muriel takes some rancid broccoli that has been in the in between Jeeves's toes for like a week. So, which Courage can't eat, and then he and then he goes outside to go vomit. Um, and and the Weevil, satisfied that he's that he is actually best of Courage, realizes that he now gets to stay. And 
but then decides that he actually does have some room for dessert and proceeds to go and actually suck on Muriel's neck again, um, which at which point Courage comes in, um, panic, panics, and realizes he actually needs to find a way to actually defeat the Weevil, so he grabs the Weevil's, grabs the Weevil's proboscis and, and, and successfully pulls it off Muriel and then sticks it to the, to the bug's own stomach, which causes him to strain himself of his own nutrients and shrink. So he winds up becoming the size of a normal sized weevil at this point. And Jeeves is and, Je and Jeeves having been defeated kicks kicks Courage in the shins for defeating him, calls him a stupid dog, and then walk and then walks out of the house. Um and then at which point Courage then proceeds to nurse Muriel back to health and get her back to her normal plump self. Um with Muriel thanking Courage, pointing out that she didn't realize how skinny she'd gotten. Um, and, and does thank him for nursing her back to health, at which and also and also praises Courage for, for his genius idea of turning Eustace into potting soil so that they can kind of grow a new human, as it were. They stick him in a pot, they stick him in, they stick him in some potting soil, and then he eventually grows into a flower. Although he, and then with Mir, with him, but now that he's a flower, he just kind of, all he can really do is complain about the, about where Jeeves went, not realizing that Jeeves actually drained him of his nutrients and is actually responsible for his predicament in the first place. So, yeah. And so, yeah, this episode is interest is kind of interesting because the, because Jeeves is just kind of, I mean, to be fair, I mean, Jeeves, Jeeves, yes, Jeeves did drain the bags of their nutrients, but, uh, he did, for the most, and while, it, and it's kind of implied that he, that he was do that he was kind of treating them like royalty because it, mean, it meant he had healthier, more nutrients to suck, but, uh, I, he is, it is interesting that he did genuinely try to care for the bags, even if he was planning to suck them dry, but, uh, but yeah, it is. But yeah, this episode is kind of just interesting in that they wind up having a butler for a bit, for a bit, even if he did have some sinister intent. Although he, he didn't, he, it's implied that he was just ver, that he's just very hungry, and that uh, he 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 probably just he probably just couldn't help himself by draining his host's nutrients. So, but in any case, that's my review of Evil Weevil. Onward to the next one. <laughs>so this episode mcpherson phantom is actually interesting and that's about a spirit a vengeful spirit that's trying to blow up your muriel and eustace's marriage which is ju just a fun just kind of the, one of the funnier things i've seen from this just it's just it's just you have this supernatural thing that could serve as a real threat but it's not really antagonistic it's just trying to ruin a marriage that is its entire thing for this episode and it's kind of funny um but in any case um in any case, it starts off with the uh, with Muriel actually folding laundry. I'm um, even reciting her mantra that she recites while she's actually folding it. Um, and she's and she's just kind of explaining how she to arms in arms in so shoulder back bend over backwards, which is just her mantra that she repeats every time she folds a, a shirt, which is just sound advice, a sound mantra to just repeat every time you're actually folding your clothes. It's a very it's a very nice thing. Um, but in any case, but in any case, uses then barges in and immediately takes a takes a shirt from the bottom of the pile um with with, Mur with muriel being a little annoyed at him and uses merely merely apologizes but also point but also kind of doesn't take full responsibility because he points out that uh she made the pile backwards uh as it, as it were but uh she but she but she decides to apologize but she decides it's all right and decides to just continue folding folding and as she's reciting her mantra um uses then proceeds to be folded along with the clothes um he his while wearing a shirt he actually winds up with, with his shoulders back arms chest forward bent over backwards um at which point at which point um eustace complains about how she's folding his clothes too tight um and he and she merely responds that she didn't change anything and wonders if it's a new detergent at which point eustace now now bent literally bent over backwards with his arms stuck in a locked position then walks out of the room grumbling um, and courage, and courage, who's been sitting in the laundry basket, wonders what is what what exactly is going on. Um, it's at this point where and and later, um, Muriel's actually actually polishing Eustace's shoes, point, and even states that that she shined the shoe shoes so polished that they can even make a young a old woman look young again. Um, which Eustace points out is complete in other horse crap because as he points out, nothing can make her look young again because she's already old. So he then, so he then proceeds to point out that she that she should just give him his shoes so that he can put them on. Um, and and then she and then he does. He puts them on, kind of grumbling about about the nonsense of it. Um, and and as Courage is gnawing on his anger, he 
he actually hears an explosion, and he looks over to see that Eustace's feet are now charred black, black to a crisp, and and Eustace then proceeds to explain how Muriel, how Muriel is going to blow up, blow up his shoes, he, she should take them outside, but she merely responds that she didn't, again, she didn't do anything different, and wonders if there's a different change in the, in the shoe polish. Um, in which, and then later, later that, and then later that day, again, she comes by, she comes by having, having just freshly steamed Eustace's hat, Eustace puts it on, and there's revealed to be a bunch of birds inside the hat, which are now picking, pecking at his, at his bald head, and he run, and he runs away screaming, um, and she wonders if there's something different with the steam, so, she hasn't quite figured out yet that there's something weird going on with, uh, with all of these things, um, and you and you and um and in any case later later that day when when they're actually trying to make the, when she's actually trying to serve Eustace dinner he merely responds that he's not going to be eating her food anymore, um pointing out that he feels like she has it she has it in for him um and when Muriel points out that that's absolutely preposterous he then shows her the 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 welts on his head as proof from the from the bird attack that he suffered that afternoon um and and then proceeds to walk and then proceeds to get up and go and and decides to just go into the living room to make a call. Um, with, and Muriel re asks, Yusuf, asks Courage if, she, if he thinks that, that she's actually capable of doing anything like that, and Courage point, and Courage just, no, just nods that he, that she, that she would never. Um, so, because, yeah, M Muriel's the kind of, kind of person, she doesn't really have a bad bone in her body. She's not that kind of person. Um, or, like, at least until, uh, unless you take your kindness away, um, in which case she is a bad, that kind of person, but, uh, that, that was only a one-off occurrence, so probably never going to happen again. But, uh... In any, case, in any case, in any case, Eustace goes into the into the living room to actually call his mother, um, and let her and let her know that her that that he feels like Muriel is mad at him for whatever reason, um, and and points out that that it, that it doesn't feel safe in the house anymore. Um, and in case in point, as he's actually making the call, a chandelier suddenly falls off the ceiling and hits Eustace on the head with with Muriel barging and wondering what ha what the hell happened. Um, and Eustace merely remar rem remarks that she must have loosened the chandelier while she was dusting it, but Muriel merely points out that that's absolutely preposterous since, as she points out, they don't even own a chandelier. Um, but in any case, it's at this point where there's suddenly, an, there's suddenly a knock at the door and Eustace picks himself up and, and dusts himself off and goes to answer the door only to discover his mother, who, in the five minutes since she's, been, since she's actually been, been gotten a call from Eustace, she actually got a degree in, um, in couples therapy. Um, and is actually now a licensed psychologist. So she, so she tells him that she that he's that she's actually there to help save his marriage. Um, and and, and even and even decides to bring everybody into the kitchen so that she can actually conduct a, conduct a, an actual thing. But uh, it quickly becomes apparent that her methods aren't actually going to help at all. Um, she merely just asks them, asks them a bunch of math questions and and doesn't really help them in any sort in any sort of tangible way. Um. At which point, at which point, she merely re she merely remarks that um said that 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 Eustace should just toss her out already, and points out that that she that she that he that she, he should do it sooner rather than later, and make sure he keeps the house because he kind she kind of needs to get out of her trailer. Um, at which point, you, at which point, um, there, there's suddenly a there's a Meryl pours pours everybody a cup of tea and points out that this is completely out of, of being blown out of proportion, and that she feels like. If Muriel's mom, if um, Eustace's mom isn't actually going to help, that she might as well leave. But then, but then Eustace's tea blows out of his cup like a geyser and blasts into his face. At which point he decides he's going to go sleep in his truck since that's the only place he can feel safe. Um, at which point, Mir at which point Muriel then proceeds to get get up, pointing out that she's done with it with her, with all of this nonsense, and and she encouraged leave. And Muriel wonders if there wonders if there's something strange going on around the house, and indeed there is, because then the camera pans up, and there's the Phantom. So, and so, it's, so it's at this point where Courage realizes he actually needs to figure out. He it's, it's at this point where Muriel wonders if there's actually anybody who could actually help them, and and Courage eventually realizes there is a somebody who can help, and who is actually very nearby, and actually runs upstairs to go to go talk to the computer and and let him know what's going on. Um, and the computer just responds that just is come a little shows a little confusion and is a little bit baffled that um, Courage actually wants to get a merge get a certificate get a um, psychology certificate so that he can actually help help fix Muriel and uses his marriage. But uh, pointing out that he's kind of a twit and doesn't think that Courage has what it takes. But when Courage is in, is insistent, um, 
the computer decides that he'll actually that, he'll, that he's actually licensed to give out licenses. So he tell, so he actually then proceeds to run a run a um, test to, to make sure that Courage is actually is capable of actually getting a getting a, a psychology license. Um, and and some of these questions again are just are just a, are just the computer being dr giving dry weight, which is just the computer the computer makes a has a math question about how the usual if Johnny has five apples and Dave has three apples, but instead of but instead of the usual ending of how many apples do they ha do they have together, then he just responds. Then why don't they if they if one guy has five apples and the other guy has three apples, then why don't they just shut the hell up and eat? Um, and it's and it's really and it's just really fun really funny sequence, but uh. In any case, as the as the as um Kirch is actually getting his marriage license, getting his certificate to actually fix Mur uses of Muriel's license, um, Mobag is actually rooting through, looting through the um, refrigerator and actually encounters the Phantom herself. And the fa and and while Ma is actually very very scared of the fact that there's a Phantom in the refrigerator, um, the the, the Phantom which is McPherson which is McPherson, um. Or the McPherson Phantom, as you as you call it, um, it is the titular antagonist of the episode. The McPherson Phantom then proceeds to explain about how it about how they wa actually want the same thing, um, and then proceeds to explain how um, a long time ago one of Mur one of Muriel's aunts, one of her great 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 aunts, or, or one of her ancestors, actually actually blew up her own marriage by tossing by tossing her husband into the into the into Loch Ness, and it get, got eaten by the Loch Ness monster, which. Yeah, that was which Ma does explain would blow up any marriage, even though that's just straight up murder. Let's be perfectly honest. Um, and so and so since then, um, the, the McPherson Phantom has has des desires to actually destroy destroy Muriel's marriage as revenge for her what her ancestor did. Um, so and 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 Ma decides that that, that since it, it's a prime opportunity to actually torment Eustace even further, decides to actually help the help the help the Phantom out with their, their revenge plan, and then they start brainstorming ideas to actually mess with Eustace, which is which involves putting a snake in his toothpaste, putting putting steel wool in his underwear, and a couple of other things that you wouldn't want to find on your person. Um, but in case, and now that, but in case Courage Sense gets his marriage license, gets his um marriage fixing certificate, he actually gets a psychology certificate, and actually, and and now that he's now armed with the knowledge to actually help them fix their marriage, he then scoops up scoops up juices from his truck, get, grabs Miro from a rocking chair, and brings them upstairs, where it's revealed that they're where they where he places them on your on your typical so therapy sofa, you know you know the one, um which apparently is. Already, always been in the basement, uh, in the attic, apparently, because it, it's that it's it apparently is there. Um, but uh, but in case Courage then proceeds to set up his therapy studio, his therapy room, which is just where he hangs his psycho hangs his psychology psychology certificate up on the his counseling certificate up on the wall. He drags up uses his chair to sit in uh, as a therapist. And he starts going to work. He he shows them an inkblot test, which gets them to kind of reflect about how they see each other. Um, and then he also and then he also has them beat each other with foam bats until they get the regression out. Um, and also, and and during the sequence, um, Eustace d does actually dump a little bit of his trauma about what, how he was raised as a child, and his mom never liked him. He he just outright says it. His mom never liked him and actually tormented him as a child, which I did explain in the episode in my review of Mother's Day, but. Uh, it does bear repeating here. His mother psychologically abused him, and that would, and that's why he's so bitter and miserable. Um, and and she hasn't really changed all that much either, since she still abuses him in the modern day, and is now working with a phantom to make his life even more of a living hell. So yeah, she she's kind of terrible. She's a terrible mother. Um, but in any case, but in case, but in case, courage does successfully get that get their marriage mended. Um, and they do, and they do want, and Eustace does decide that he'll give Muriel one last chance, since obviously she's been, since obviously it wasn't even her fault to begin with, so, and Courage is happy that their marriage has been mended, but the Phantom then realizes, then, then, then feels like something is going on, um, senses, and senses that something is amiss, um, so, so Ma actually goes up to the attic and discovers that, uh, Cur and discovers that Courage has actually mended their, mended their relationship, and is annoyed and furious, and tells, and tells uses to get away from the from Muriel and to, saying that she's no good for him, but 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 um uses merely fires back that she doesn't know what she's talking about. Um, at which point at which point at which point the 
at which point the uh, um, Ma actually explains that explains that she should that he should know but that he should know better that that she's out to get him and then explains and then points out that she, that he likely won't like all like the um slobsters that she's put in his underwear at which point the phantom finally reveals itself to courage and stuffs some stuff some lobsters down Eustace's overalls which you which which um courage quickly realize quickly realizes what's going on and pulls out a piece several some times to actually pull the to actually pull the lob to actually extract the lobsters from Eustace's underwear since he just got through from fixing uh, Eustace, Eustace and Muriel's marriage and he's trying to put it to mend it back together. So obviously, if this, if this winds up be making Eustace angry, it's going to blow up their marriage. So he pulls, so he extracts the lobsters from their from their underwear. Um, at which point the at which point um Ma tries to tries to intervene, pointing out that Courage is ruining everything. Um, and proceeds to chase chase after him and chase him ar around the attic. But uh, Courage merely shows her, shows her an ink blot test while they're while they're chasing each other, and he re and she decides to actually trauma dump a little bit as well. Um, at which point we find out that the Phantom, the McPherson Phantom, was actually going after the wrong person. As it turns out, it was Ma, it was Ma's great great aunt that was at, that actually pushed her pushed McPherson's husband into the lake. And, and resulted in him being eaten by the Loch Ness monster. Um, and the and the McPherson Phantom realizing she she was going after the wrong person, then proceeds to decide to torment Ma to, to torment Ma, much to Ma's chagrin and fear. And then she and then Ma runs out of the house, but not before giving Muriel and Eustace her bill and runs out. But the Phantom merely pointing out that she feels so that she feels discontented and feels feels bad for actually for wrongly accusing Muriel of what of what something she didn't do. Um, and then it proceeds to pull, pull out some lobsters and chase and chases after Ma. So, with that, everything is largely back to normal. Um, Eustace, Eustace is back to complaining about his old shelf and about how Muriel isn't doing his, doing her job right. But uh, but uh, but uh, but now he's no longer worried that Muriel is trying to kill him. So so she remarks that everything is back to normal. Um, and, and encourage merely nods and then shows a shows his um ink blot test to the audience which turns into McPherson Phantom which laughs at the audience a little bit and that's how the episode ends so yeah this episode is kind of interesting in that uh it's, it's long story short long story short this is Ma, this is Ma, another one of Ma's um in, 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 uh, antagonistic roles where she where this time she's actually trying to help blow up the marriage where so that they, so she can get the house um and and also she's no longer she's no longer be pleasant toward courage anymore. She she out which makes sense. He blew, he did break into break into her place of business and try and try to destroy her her plans. So obviously she's now no longer ha happy to see courage. She is now outright hostile to him. She's no longer being pleasant with him. But uh, now this episode this episode is just kind of interesting in that it's just a phantom try is that. There's an antagonistic threat, but it's but its threats are a little mundane. Yes, it does some very borderline dangerous things to use this, but uh, although her end goal isn't to really, isn't like do anything evil or anything, it's just well, I'm gonna blow I'm gonna blow up this couple's marriage. That is my end goal. That is what I'm going to do, and it's kind of, and it's kind of interesting. But uh, yeah, it's, it's it, that's just a little bit interesting that the, that this that this phantom doesn't really have anything evil in, in the in the long term it's just going to blow up their marriage and then see from there that's all it really wants is vengeance but in any case um that's my review of mcpherson phantom and both of these episodes as a whole what did you guys think let's get a discussion in the comment section down below or over on my discord server link in the description anyway thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed be sure to like comment and subscribe also be sure to follow me on twitter in the description below um, be sure to check out my Patreon in the description below as well if you want to help support the show and you want to see more me review more things like this and do more events like this, then be sure to go check that out down in the description. Again, it does help support me, so be sure to go check that out. Um, and finally, if you want to see more content from me, then be sure to check out the videos linked in the end screen. The top video is the most recent one. It may or may not be this one. Whereas the bottom video is the video recommended to you based on what you've already seen from me. So, if you want to try something new or see more of what you like, then be sure to check both of those videos out. Um... But in any case, thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.